Hello, welcome to Holy Tea with Ellen this week of April 21st. This past Sunday was uh, Affirmation of Baptism Sunday. Our 8th grade students affirmed their baptism in worship at 10 a.m. There were 10 students present in worship to affirm their baptism. Um, and that's kind of what we are working towards with confirmation classes is to get these students to a place where they can publicly affirm that these promises that were made on their behalf at baptism are their own now to continue and carry on in a life of faith. Now that doesn't let us off the hook. The congregation still has a role in helping to keep these promises. Uh, we say so in worship. We ask God to help and guide us, support these young people in their life of faith. So that's our job now as we move forward and these students uh, age into high school and all that that holds for them. Uh, so this was an exciting Sunday. We had cake. Uh, it was a lot of people in the building, and it was and it was a great thing. So, uh, if you didn't weren't there, and you want to look back at uh, record, it's recorded. As our 10 a.m. worship is uh, streamed and recorded, so you can go back and watch that uh, ceremony part of the worship service if you would like to do that. See those young people. Uh, this week in church school is a worship week where we pause and allow families time and space to worship together and our church school teachers the same privilege to have an opportunity to worship. It's what's uh, part of what's listed in the expectations of the role of church school teacher that they have a vibrant faith life and worship life and prayer life so that they are equipped to uh, pass those gifts uh, down to the students that they spend time with each week when they meet for church school. So worship week this week, no church school on Sunday or Wednesday. However, you do have homework if you're in church school. They've been preparing uh, to sing in worship on May 12th at the 8.30 a.m. service. They've been working with Jill Bjorklund, one of our children's choir directors, to learn a song that they'll sing in worship. Uh, you would have got an email this past week with a link to a YouTube video that you can listen to at home and practice. You should have... a uh, lyric sheet should have come home with you as well. Uh, don't worry if that's got misplaced. They can get another one next week. We'll continue to practice uh, through the next two weeks and then on that third week, Sunday, May 12th, just show up at 8.30 for worship and those, those kiddos will sing the song they've been working on all this time. Um, so that'll be fun. Now that the 8th graders are have affirmed their baptism, that doesn't mean that it's over, that they graduated from church. We still have three more weeks of programming here, so uh, we're offering some exciting things. 8th graders this week will meet in their small groups following worship, and they'll get to have a little pizza party as a celebration of an end to that formalized time together as a small group. Those relationships will remain and grow, but they won't gather in that formalized, structured way each week as they have for so many years. So this is going to be a little bit of a celebration for that group to kind of reflect on their time together. And the 6th and 7th graders are continuing their big questions unit. We're going to talk more about some questions that they have turned in. Uh, we continue to be very curious about sin and evil and death in the world. Um, so we're going to dive a little deeper into what those mean symbolically in our lives and in real time, uh, how that how that plays out in our world. Uh, one thing to mark your calendars, Sunday, May 5th, our high school students who are attending the ELCA Youth Gathering will be holding a plant and bake sale to raise money for that effort. So come ready to buy some plants for your garden or maybe for uh, Mother's Day is coming up quickly after that. Some baked goods that the kids have made themselves and will be selling um, and we're really excited to uh, have that opportunity to connect with the congregation in that way and hopefully get some financial support for this big trip that we're taking to New Orleans. It's quite the trek. We are flying um, and so there's it's just you know travel costs but there's also great benefits to traveling to an event like this. I'm going to end our time with just a little bit of a reminder of what these baptismal promises are that these confirmation students promised to, to continue to live out in their faith uh, in, in their coming days and weeks and their faith lives. So, promises we make are, at baptism are to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, 
to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. And then we, as a congregation, and as individuals, say, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. That's the business of what we're doing around here. These promises, this is this is uh, the call as a life of faith. So I welcome you in that work with us and the learning team and the families that gather here each week. Uh, as a faith community, it is up to all of us to form the faith of the youngest members of our community. So I invite you to be in prayer about how you may be a part of that process in the coming weeks and months. Peace be with you.